This is the all new Asus ROG Ally X, and it's a improvement over the Asus ROG Ally. Not a second generation, they were very, very clear about that. It is a upgraded version of the original. And as someone who's never owned the Asus ROG Ally, the Asus ROG Ally X was my first foray into the Asus ROG Ally world, and I've gotta say, I absolutely love this device. Now, even though the X is the first time that I've owned an Asus ROG Ally, it's not the first time that I've used a handheld gaming PC. In fact, over the last year, I've had multiple handheld gaming PCs, probably more than people should. I started out with the Steam Deck, and then I got the Steam Deck OLED, and I also had the Lenovo Legion Go, and now I have the Asus ROG Ally X. And I've been using this thing every day since it first released on July 22nd when I picked up mine, and I've gotta say, it's really, really great. And obviously the first ROG Ally was great, but I do think a lot of the improvements on the Ally X actually make this a significantly better handheld than the original. But first, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Anchor, and the brand new Anchor Prime Power Bank. This thing is absolutely incredible. It's a 27,650 milliamp hour power bank. It's got 250 watt multi-device charging. It can actually charge up to a 13 inch MacBook Pro M2 up to 1.28 times, or a smaller device like an iPhone 14 up to 4.67 times. It's powered by the latest PD 3.1 technology and it's got two USB-C and one USB-A port on the top. It can actually boost a 16 inch M2 MacBook Pro up to 50% in just 28 minutes. It's wild. Now of course that's a lot of specs that I just threw at you and you may or may not know what they mean but I will say that Anchor is a trusted brand. I've been using them for years and this power bank has been absolutely critical for me whenever I'm traveling. I mean it's literally the size of a soda can or an energy drink can if you will. Kind of like an energy drink. It's not helping you juice up but it's helping your devices juice up. That was a Actually a pretty decent metaphor, I'm not gonna lie. This power bank is also 99.54 watt hours, which meets the TSA's requirement to bring this device onto airplanes. It has to be sub 100 watt hours and it's 99.54. So the good news is you can throw this into your carry-on bag and charge up your phone or your laptop or your Nintendo Switch or your Asus ROG Ally, whatever you wanna charge up while you're on the plane. Plus these USB-Cs are 170 watt fast charge capable, which means you can charge up your devices crazy fast. Over the past decade, I've had countless power banks and none of them have been as good as this one. This has all the features that I would need, enough power to charge up all of my devices and it can also do it incredibly quickly. And something else that I really love about the Anchor Prime Power Bank is that you can get it with the 100 watt charging base which you can magnetically connect it to and charge it up wirelessly. Literally all you need to do for an instant power boost of up to 100 watts is plug your charging base into the wall and then drop your power bank on top of it and you're good to go. It also has two USB-C's and a USB-A port on the side of the device so you can charge other things while you charge your power bank. In fact I actually keep this thing by my bed and charge my power bank and of course my phone and my iPad and things like that. It's also smaller because because of GAN technology, so you get the same charging power that you would in a larger charging base, but in the small compact size. And both the 100 watt charging dock and the Anchor Prime power bank have LED indicators to show you how charged they are and how they're charging your devices and all the important information that you would need. Not only that, there's also the intuitive Anchor Smart app. You can use the Anchor Smart app to quickly locate your power bank with sound alerts, access real-time stats, and optimize your device's battery life with smart charging. These two Anchor devices have been incredibly useful for me. This power bank has been great for traveling. I love that I can just drop it on the charging base to charge it up. I can charge up my devices through the charging base. And if there's a blackout, just pull it off, charge my phone this way or charge my laptop this way and I'm good to go. I'm actually literally not kidding. There's a tornado watch happening right now in Philadelphia as I film this video. So I might need this right after I finish filming this. I hope I don't, but it's good to know that I have it. So make sure to check out these two devices and shop the Anchor Prime Power Bank through the links in the description below. And once again, a huge thank you to Anchor for sponsoring today's video. So in today's review, I'm gonna tell you about my personal experience with the Asus ROG G Ally X over the last two weeks and let you know whether I think this $800 handheld device is worth your money. Yes, you heard that right. It's 800 bucks. Well, 799.99 if we're being honest. So you know, sent off. But that is significantly more expensive than some of the other gaming handhelds available on the market, like the Steam Deck OLED, which comes in at $650, or even last year's original Asus ROG Ally, which is a pretty similar handheld to this device, which also comes in at a retail price of 650 bucks. So in most cases, you're gonna be spending $150 more on this device than some of the other comparable devices. Now, to be fair, this device is more premium than those other devices in many ways, and we'll talk about those throughout the review, but for a lot of people who are trying to save some money, $150 can be a big deal. So the first thing that you should know about the Asus ROG Ally if you don't have much experience with gaming handhelds is that this is a Windows 11 PC. I mean, it's literally a full-on Windows 11 computer in your hands, which is kind of wild. And because of that, it can do all of the things that a Windows 11 PC can do. However, it also has a lot of the downsides that a Windows 11 PC has. And one of those problems is that Windows 11 does not work amazingly well on a device that doesn't have a keyboard or a mouse. Now obviously you can plug in a keyboard and a mouse, but when it comes to portability and you're just using this on like a trip or something, it's not the best interface for joysticks. 
Now one of the Ally X's main competitors is the Steam Deck OLED, and this device, while not as powerful as the Asus ROG Ally X, does feature Steam OS, which is a much more user-friendly operating system. It's based on Linux and gives you a very console-like experience, which for a casual gamer like myself, that's amazing. The problem is, because this is not a Windows PC, there are certain anti-cheats that certain games require that only work on Windows PCs or gaming consoles. And even though the Steam Deck OLED might have enough power to play some of those games, it can't because it can't run the anti-cheat software. So right off the bat, Windows handhelds already have the edge there because they can play almost all of the games available, whereas the Steam Deck OLED cannot. And there are certain games, like some Call of Duties and Madden games that I play personally that I just can't play on the Steam Deck OLED, but I can play on the Asus ROG Ally X, or realistically any other Windows 11 handheld. But like I said, using Windows 11 on a tiny touchscreen with joysticks is, is not ideal. And the way Asus dealt with that was by creating their own launcher skin called Armory Crate, which is similar to Steam OS in that you can see all of your games on one page and just click A to jump into any game. You can also scroll between different game platforms and select your favorites and things like that. However, it's not as comprehensive as SteamOS. SteamOS is a whole operating system. This is purely just like a skin launcher thing. That said, it's not bad and it is actually how I launch most of my games. And you can actually pull up Armory Crate SE at any time by clicking the Armory Crate button on the side of the screen. But I'm gonna go way more in depth into the differences between the Asus ROG Ally X and the Steam Deck OLED in a full comparison video coming soon. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, I should thank you guys because if you are subscribed to the channel, you are one of the first 100,000 subscribers to subscribe to this channel. We just hit 100,000 subscribers recently, and I can't thank you guys enough. It's a huge milestone, I'm so excited about it, and it's a dream of mine to have a tech channel. Although I do have a sneaker channel, which I love, and that's my main channel, the tech channel has always been a passion project of mine, so I really appreciate all the support that you guys have shown me, and uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. Many more videos like this to come, but at this point, let's talk about some of the changes between the original Asus ROG Ally and the new ROG Ally X. The first and most obvious is the color. The Asus ROG Ally came only in white, and the Asus ROG Ally X comes only in black. And while yes, I do like the way that the black looks on this handheld. I kind of like that white. It was very unique and it was different. I don't know if it got dirty quicker than the black does, but I personally would have liked to have at least had the option to choose between the two colors, but I guess this is just the way that they're differentiating the two handhelds, so you gotta go with black. Speaking of the shell, there are some other differences on the X that are pretty nice improvements over the original Asus ROG Ally, and the first is that they've actually thickened the width of the hand grip by 4.5 millimeters, meaning that this is much less of a flat console and more of like a grippy controller, at least more similar to the Steam Deck. And although I find the Steam Deck significantly more comfortable in hand still to this day, the Asus ROG Ally X is definitely better than it was. Other changes include the redesign of the programmable back buttons. They're significantly smaller on this device, which means you don't accidentally click them as much. And ironically, you can actually click them from any angle, which sounds like it'd be easier to activate them by accident but uh, I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. And even though I find my fingers resting on them, they're not uncomfortable. Like they don't cause any issues for me when I'm gaming. The triggers have been slightly redesigned and feel really good in the hand. The face buttons have also been shifted a little bit. The joysticks have also been significantly improved. Now they last 2.5 times longer. The original joysticks had some drift issues. And based on what Asus is saying, these joysticks should last so much longer. Plus they also feel really nice and springy. They feel really, really good. Of course, you've still got your RGB lighting around the joystick, which I didn't like at first. But the more that I use it, I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. I, I don't mind it. It doesn't really use up that much battery anyway, so I've left it on even though it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of cheesy, but I like it. The D-pad is now an eight-way directional D-pad, which makes it better for fighting games, and it feels really nice and clicky. I really, really love the way that this D-pad feels, especially with rolls. It feels really good when you're rolling it. Asus swapped out one of the proprietary eGPU ports on the top of the device for a second USB-C port, which works with Thunderbolt, which is incredible. Also can be used for eGPUs, if that's something that you're interested in. But for just general quality of life for most people who don't have external GPUs, it's just nice to have two USB-Cs. I really like that a lot. Of course, you've got your fingerprint reader on the power button, which works most of the time. I just don't always place my finger in the right way on the fingerprint reader to get it every single time 100%. It works like 80% of the time, but if I just readjust my finger, it's fine. Asus has also moved the micro SD card slot in the top of the device because of the thermal issues that were causing problems with the micro SD card slot on the older units. And uh, for me, I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Not only that, according to Asus, they've also updated the thermal unit inside the device. So you've got new fans with more blades, things like that. Uh, it still gets hot and it still gets loud but not crazy hot or crazy loud, at least from my experience. But those are generally all of the external changes on the Ally X. The screen is the same as it was in the old version. It's a seven inch 1080p IPS display. It's 120 Hertz capable. It looks really, really good and it gets up to 500 nits of brightness, which is fine. I will say though, that even though there is apparently an anti-glare coating on the screen, it's not the best. I mean, maybe I'm spoiled because I've been using the Steam Deck OLED with the etched glass screen, which just does an amazing job of diffusing the light so, so well. It's just nowhere near this. 
So it's kind of a bummer in that sense. Also, it's not an OLED screen, so there's that too. But I'm sure the price of the X would have been a lot more if they put an OLED screen into it, so I'm not totally surprised that they didn't change the screen. Something else that hasn't changed between the original and this one is the speaker placement. They both fire forward, and it actually does a really good job of creating really nice, loud, and clear sound. I really, really love the way that this device sounds whenever I'm playing games. Definitely better than other handhelds from other brands out there, especially because the speakers fire forward at your face rather than like out the bottom or the top or the side or wherever. The X still has the same AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme, so you can expect similar performance on this device to the previous Asus ROG Ally. However, they have increased the RAM on this device from 16 gigabytes to 24 gigabytes, which does help and my games ran pretty fast. I'd say generally most AAA titles you can run on medium settings with no issues. The X also has a one terabyte SSD, so you get some pretty nice storage in this device over the previous Asus ROG Ally, which I think came with 512. I think you might've been able to get a one terabyte. I'm not totally sure. No, only 512 gigabytes, huh? Okay, well now you get a terabyte. And Asus also changed where you could put the SSD inside the device, so now you can fit the standard length one, and you can put it in up to an eight terabyte SSD, which means you can get some serious storage. I haven't opened it up myself, but I have heard that it's very easy to open up. You've only got like six screws, I believe, in order to get into the back of the device. But now that we've covered almost all of the changes from the old one to the new one, and talked about some of the differences between this and the Steam Deck OLED, let's talk about my actual gaming experience. I've put as many games on here as my one terabyte SSD would allow, and I've been playing almost every single one of them. I've put a good amount of time into Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is a game that I cannot play on the Steam Deck because for some reason it's just not compatible with the Steam Deck. Put some time into God of War, put some time into Forza Horizon 5, which I'm actually really enjoying, and then also Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, and also Star Wars Battlefront Classic Edition, which is not really any kind of test of this device other than can you play it? And the answer is yes. For the last two weeks, I've had an incredibly smooth gaming experience on the Asus ROG Ally X. Forza Horizon 5 looks amazing, plays amazing. I've had really no stuttering that I can think of. It's felt great and it's looked great and I've really, really enjoyed it. And battery life wise, I've gotten about two and a half, three hours on Forza Horizon 5. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot to mention battery life. The battery on the X has improved over the original Asus ROG Ally. It was a 40 watt hour battery, now it's an 80 watt hour battery. And from what I've heard, even though the battery size is doubled, you get more than double the battery life on this device, maybe because it's more efficient, I'm not sure. But either way, it's a much bigger battery. And also for my own personal testing, comparing it to the Steam Deck OLED, the battery has lasted longer on this than on that, which is pretty wild. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, I definitely had to play at performance settings because it just was a a little bit too graphically intensive for this um, at full ultra settings. I turned off ray tracing as well. God of War, kind of similar situation. I turned it down to medium settings. It did look better on this than on the Steam Deck OLED, which would make sense because it's a more powerful console. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 looked amazing, played amazing. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront. Um, I mean, it's a PS2 game, so, or is it PS1? been a while. Hogwarts Legacy looked great. I mean, all these games played really, really well. And one thing I really love about the Asus ROG Ally X and the fact that it's running off of Windows 11 is that there's so many customizability options. You can really mess with the settings to get higher graphics, get better performance, really whatever you're looking to do, you can do on the Asus ROG Ally X. And as someone who is not that PC savvy, I mainly use Macs. I do have a PC um, and I do game on my PC, but I really don't mess with settings that much. It's nice to know that I can, but all I really did in most cases was go to the command center, adjust whether I was in performance mode or uh, turbo mode or silent mode. And I just mainly stayed on performance mode and it worked out great. So I had no issues whatsoever. I'm not gonna do any benchmarks on this because I don't really do benchmarks and I'm just giving you guys my honest opinions about using this device for two weeks. And for the last two weeks, it's been great. And I will say that graphically and power wise, it did seem better than the Steam Deck OLED. And while yes, even though the screen is 1080p capable, if you bump it down to like 900p for certain games, you're not gonna notice a difference. It's a small enough screen, it won't bother you and it'll save you some processing power. So it does help with battery life and getting a higher frame rate out of your games. There are just so many little things that you can do just to make this work for whatever it is that you wanna do. That's why I really, really love this thing and I find myself picking it up the most out of all of my gaming handhelds. Now to be fair to Asus, they are packing a lot of tech into this device and they are giving you a lot of power for $800. It is a noticeable improvement over the previous Asus ROG in many, many ways. It's a much more powerful device than the Steam Deck OLED. You're getting more RAM, you're getting a bigger battery. Uh, there's a lot of things about this that are great. And honestly, for people who don't mind spending $800 on a gaming handheld, I think it's worth it. However, that doesn't mean I don't think it could be better. And I think that right off the bat, the first thing that they could give you is a stand and a case. Well, mainly a case actually, because they don't give you a case. All the other handhelds that I've talked about have cases. The Lenovo Legion Go came with a case. Steam Deck OLED came with a case. This they just give you, and you kind of got to raw dog it unless you buy a case, especially if you're traveling, that can be a bummer. Like imagine you throw it in your backpack and the screen gets scratched or like the joystick gets dinged up or I don't know what else could happen, but other things could happen. And uh, it would just be nice if they threw in a cheap 
$10 case, just something, some level of protection for when you travel. Also ergonomically, I feel like they could have adjusted it a bit more and made it a bit more comfortable. I find that after a, you know, a two hour play sesh, my hands get tired, especially when I'm using my pinkies to prop up the device. I've kind of stopped doing that because it just doesn't feel that good. The Steam Deck OLED just feels so much better in the hand and that's because the grips are so much bigger. Now, obviously it's a thinner device overall, so you have more space to kind of have your fingers wrap around it, but I don't know, there's just something about this, it still feels a little slab-like. Now I realize that this is a device from a completely different category, but the PlayStation Portal, this feels amazing in the hand. Now obviously portability-wise, it's not gonna be as portable as something like the RG Ally, because it's a thinner, easier to kind of throw in your bag device. But this, because they literally took a PlayStation controller and threw a screen in the middle, it just feels really, really good in the hand, and I think it could be significantly heavier, like this, and it would still feel really good because you've just got better grips. The ASUS ROG Ally, I feel like they were really going for portability, and that's why they didn't increase the grips by that much, 4.5 millimeters. I mean, increasing the grips by a little bit more wouldn't have made it that much less portable. And it's already a device that's not, like, incredibly portable. It's not like a phone. So I wouldn't have minded, you know, chunkier grips. Give me something that I could hold, you know? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the depth of the grip on the Steam Deck versus the Asus. And again, I'm gonna get into all of this in the comparison video. I keep like trying to do the comparison video here and now, but <laughs> just stay tuned for that. I don't know. I just feel like there are certain things about the Asus ROG Ally that they really need to fix uh, on the upcoming second edition, whenever that comes out, presumably in a year. Maybe a year and a half, I don't know, who knows. But all those things aside, this is still an incredible device. It's still literally a handheld gaming PC that can play pretty much every game on the market right now and play it well. You can get really great frame rates from pretty intensive games. You can get really great graphics from pretty intensive games. And this new battery just makes this thing so much easier to use for longer periods. You can plug it in less. It's incredible. Now, would I recommend this to someone who already has the Asus ROG Ally or the Steam Deck, specifically the Steam Deck OLED? No, you don't need to spend the money. It's just not worth it. However, if you don't have any of those devices and you're looking to grab a handheld Windows gaming PC, in my opinion, this is the best one that you can buy right now. It's just the most complete package on the market. The Lenovo Legion Go is also an incredible device. You can't go wrong with that either, but in my opinion, I'd pick this. And I think if you're deciding between this and the standard Asus ROG Ally, I would spend the extra 150 bucks if you can. I think there's enough improvements here to make it worth that extra money. Again, if you're just buying this as a first time buy, if you already have the Asus ROG Ally, don't spend the money. It's an extra 800 bucks. You don't need to spend that. But if you're deciding in between this and the Asus ROG Ally, I'd go this way. But at this point, I would love to know your thoughts on the Asus ROG Ally X, whether you think it's worth the upgrade, whether you think it's worth it in general, whether you wanna buy one, whether you already have one, I don't know, any thought that you have, leave it in the comment section down below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Thank you again for 100,000 subscribers. I cannot believe it, it's crazy. That being said, I will see you all in the next one.